All right, time to open box number two. Uh, the first one was the DJI Action 2, which again, I had to go buy with my own money. And this one, which I also had to go buy with my own money. So maybe hit the like button below. That, that would be super helpful for me. And a bunch of you guys guessed this one right. Also, this is the brand new, oh, there it is. Look at that thing. MacBook Pro with M1 Max. Ooh. And now the thing is, I know there's been a bunch of videos out there on this thing already. So today we're gonna kind of do like a first look for myself, see kind of what all the hype is about. But then I'm also gonna talk about like, like who is this computer for? This is a, this is like a desktop replacement style laptop. So, so like, who's this thing for? Who, who should be out there spending this much money on a laptop, who needs this much power? And if you weren't to get this laptop, what a, uh, what laptop should you get? Because Apple has like a crazy good lineup of laptops right now. Spoiler alert, if you've been waiting to buy a new laptop and, and you've been like, I just, I wanna wait until maybe some new stuff is out, new stuff is out. All the new stuff is out. If you're looking for a laptop, yeah, it's, it's time to buy one. Hopefully I'll be able to help you today figure out which one you should buy. First though, let's get this thing open just because I've had it sitting here for like four days and I didn't open it because because once I open it, then I got to spend all the time to set it up and I can't, can't just let it sit there. And I just haven't had time to do it. Okay, Doki. Ooh, holy heck. It is as fat as everyone says. It feels, it feels like my old MacBook Pro. It's not the... This is the 2019 MacBook Pro and it is significantly thicker than the 2019 MacBook Pro. Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Is it also, hang on, let's take this off. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so pretty. It's much more like squared off. They, everything's all squared off. It really does look like the old MacBook Pro, like before, maybe like two generations before this guy, this is, it's kind of what MacBook Pros look like. When I was in college, this is what the MacBook Pro looked like. So for sure, a few a few generations before this one. Oh, what else is in here? We've got the MagSafe adapter cord. Spoiler alert, if you don't know anything about this computer, they brought MagSafe back, which I am so stoked on because I loved MagSafe and I was really bummed when they got rid of it. That might be a theme of this video is things Apple got rid of and then brought back. Silly, silly, silly. And then in here as well is the very large power brick. This is now a 140 watt power brick, which is a beast of a power brick. Can you tell how big that is? Let me, where's the other one? This is the power brick from this 2019 computer, and this is from the new one. So significantly taller, uh, the same in the other dimensions really, but significantly taller. And like this power brick, from the 2019 MacBook Pro, the cord is detachable, which is not new, but new to MagSafe. Back when we had MagSafe, the cord wasn't removable from the power brick. So if your cord got frayed or got messed up, you had to buy this whole thing and that was super annoying. Also, the cord on here, this is a braided cable instead of just a, I'm not pulling that out. Instead of like a rubber cable, this is actually braided, which should make it better for like, like tangling. Braided cords, they just don't tangle as easy. So when you, when you wrap them up and you chuck them in your bag, when you pull that out of there, it should, it should come undone and not tangle so easily. Very very happy with the MagSafe. Very happy MagSafe is back and I like the braided cable. Uh, physically, this thing is almost a half a pound heavier than this guy. So this is, I mean, it's added some heft. It seems almost identical in the other dimensions like length and width. It's, it's really just the thickness that is different. This is a good bit thicker. But the big difference between these two computers and, and the one that I feel like, well, there's lots of differences, but the one that I feel like I'm gonna feel most on a day-to-day -day basis is the ports are back. We have got ports and I'm so dang happy about it. So on this side, we've got that MagSafe connector. Very nice. We have two USB-C ports and a headphone jack. Notably, the headphone jack is in a weird spot. It's always been like the furthest up on your ports. So it's either, it's always been, it's always been like far all the way to the very top up here. And on this guy now, it's in the front on down here. Then on this side, what is maybe one of the most important things to myself as a photographer, as a video creator is Apple brought back the SD card reader of all the ports for them to have taken away. That was the one that I was like, ow, oh, but 
why? Like we didn't have another way to transfer files from SD cards, which is what everyone was shooting on, to our computers without an SD card reader. And now, now it's back. And it makes me very happy that it's back. It makes me feel like it was silly that they ever took it away. So I don't wanna give them a ton of credit because I think, think a big story again on this computer is things that Apple took away and then now they're giving it back to us. So I don't wanna to cheer too loudly and reward Apple for taking things away from us in the first place. Then on the side, we've also got another USB-C port and an HDMI port, which is super, super important, but it is HDMI 2.0 instead of 2.1. Not that big of a deal to me, I don't think, but, but we'll see as we kind of use this computer more. You guys wanna be the first ones to open it up and see? This is what it looks like. Oh. That's such a great feeling. Ooh, new keyboard. The keyboard is new. This keyboard is got like a black inset all the way around it. And this guy was silver. That was silver between the keys. And now, now we're looking at all black between the key. It looks nicer actually. It looks like more unified in there. And very notably, the touch bar is gone. That is one thing that, that I don't mind that Apple has taken away now because I have never liked the touch bar on this computer. Very cool idea when it first came out. I was actually very excited for it when it first came out because I was like, oh, how clever. They could do lots of different things with that touch bar, almost give us touch controls for our computer. And I feel like either developers just didn't pick it up and, and do much clever with it, or maybe it just wasn't a good idea. I'm glad they tried it, it was clever, but I'm very happy to see that I have all of my normal keys back again. The main one being the volume keys. I don't know why that was the biggest annoyance on the touch bar was I would have to like tap and then like tap and hold and slot. Super annoying just because you want the volume up one notch or down one notch. It was like multiple touches instead of just quieter, louder. I'm gonna do a very basic setup just so we can get into this computer. Yeah, done. Okay, all of that just so I could look at the screen and, and really compare this screen to this screen. Can you see any difference on camera? Not really. I can tell you though, in person, it is a big difference. I didn't think it was gonna be that much of a difference because on the 2019, the screen has been amazing, but this is the mini LED screen, which looks a lot more like my iPad Pro instead of my laptop. Like this looks, it looks incredible actually. The mini LED screen, I don't think this is even turned up all the way. There it is, that's all turned up. Wow, that is, is there a ridge on this one? On the 19 inch, there's kind of that like rubber rim around the screen. It's very subtle. On this one, it's like a ridge. It's like a, a pretty solid ridge. I know people on this computer have had problems when they've had it in their backpack, the screen pressing on the keyboard and then the keyboard actually leaving marks on the screen. So I think they gave it a little bit more of a recess so that, that wouldn't happen. I think that's all the, the comparisons for this computer. You get that one wiped out and ready for eBay. All right, onto this computer here. The biggest thing with the screen, the biggest thing that obviously everyone's talked about is the notch. It has a, I mean, that's a very noticeable notch. As I understand, understand it though, the screen is taller. How much taller is it? Oh yeah. So the screen is a solid bit taller. The other screen was eight and a half inches tall and this one is eight and three quarters. So they didn't really give us a notch. They gave us extra screen. Like instead of saying that they gave us a notch, they should say we, we raised up the screen. Like we made like two tabs in the screen and then that's where we put the menu. That's actually kind of like the iPhone. When the iPhone added the notch, it wasn't because they, they dug into our screen. They raised the screen all the way up. And by the way, there's a camera up there. So you needed to make a notch. That actually, that's totally acceptable to me. And I think, I think in use case, especially on my iPhone, I never realized that there's a notch there. So I'm sure that as I go along with this, especially because the notch is really just in the menu bar, I think that's a, a very overhyped con to this computer. Okay, so which build did I go with? Which, which computer is this? This is the fully tricked out 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. So when you go to Apple's website, you're looking for the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte of SSD, $3,499. But I did two upgrades, two, two upgrades that I thought were very important. The first one is I went from 32 gigabytes of unified memory to 64 gigabytes of unified memory, 400 bucks. In my mind, totally worth it. The thing is I run multiple programs at a time. I'm kind of that guy that has like seven programs open while I'm working. So 
So I don't want any memory issues to be clogging that up. I will gladly pay $400 now if for the next two to three years, I don't have to worry about running multiple apps. And then the second $400 I spent was to move from one terabyte of SSD storage to two terabytes of SSD storage. I I sort of regret not spending another $600 to move to four terabytes of internal storage, but I do. I run this little guy, which is a four terabyte SSD hard drive. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my other computer, where I put a piece of Velcro right here. And then I can have two terabytes internal, four terabytes on here, and and that should be plenty. Ugh. The the laptop that I had in 2019, I think that one came out to be 4,600. So honestly, this is a cheaper laptop than the one that I built last time, but I did make it just as expensive because I also, I added in Final Cut Pro. I think I'm switching from Premiere to Final Cut Pro. I have I have almost zero, ex I have zero experience in the new Final Cut Pro. People always ask me questions after I make a video in Premiere and they go, well, how do I do that in Final Cut Pro? And I say, I've got no clue. I do not know Final Cut Pro at all. But there's a few reasons why I want to make the switch. So I bought it so that I can get in there, I can start digging around, I can start making projects in Final Cut Pro. And if my hypothesis is correct, I'm, I'm switching to Final Cut. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Okay, so why why did I go for this build? Why did I go for so much computer? This is my job. This is what I do. I do photography. I've had the photography business for going on 14 years now. Now I'm making YouTube videos. That's what I do. That's how I make my money. So if this is an investment in my business, it's also a tax write-off. So really, I don't see any reason why someone that's not using their computer for work, someone that's not using it for creating creative projects that are that are like super, super intensive because this computer is way more than I'll probably ever even be able to push it through. I shoot on the A7S III and I probably don't need this much computer. That's kind of the point though for me is that because it's my work, because this is what I do, I don't ever wanna bump against that wall of, oh, my computer isn't powerful enough for this task. Or I wanna do a certain task and my computer is taking forever to do it. Those are things that, that in my work, I will pay extra money to eliminate those things. And again, even for people that, that are doing a lot of that work, but you're doing it on your own and you're trying to get the most bang for the buck, think there's a better computer for you. And that is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And I went on there and I tricked it out, a 10 core CPU, click on that one, add $200 to move to a 24 core GPU. That's a good choice. 32 gigabytes of unified memory is great for almost all cases. For most use cases, 32 is enough. Again, I'm buying 64 because for 400 bucks extra to know that I'll never bump against that wall, totally worth it to me. But most people, 32 is plenty. And then I would also say on that 14 inch MacBook Pro, spend the 400 bucks, go from one terabyte to two terabytes for the SSD hard drive. And that comes out for $2,899. That is an amazing deal for a computer that's that powerful. Because even that computer I think is, is probably too much computer for most people. Most people I really think should be looking at the Mac MacBook Air. And on the MacBook Air, I set one up on the website that was eight core CPU, eight core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, two terabytes of storage for $2,049. That computer right there, oh, for most people doing creative work that, that aren't running tons and tons of video work with a lot of slow motion, a lot of effects, a lot of layers and things like that, that computer right there, just that MacBook Air, Holy cow, it's amazing. And then again, you can step up to that 14 inch MacBook Pro. And if you are someone like me who goes, I, I want the best of the best of the best, and I will pay the price for it. This, uh, th this guy right here. <laughs> I don't know how much faster we can get these computers, but this thing is by far the fastest computer I've ever worked with. And I'm, I'm very excited to get it set up, start getting some programs on here, start playing around with making videos in Premiere Pro, but also, also start making videos in Final Cut. I'm excited, to, I'm excited to journey. I'm excited to be a beginner again. I'm gonna be a total beginner entering Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go on YouTube like anyone else, start looking up beginner tutorials, and, and uh, I'll take you guys along for that process. As I learn some stuff in Final Cut, if I learn some kind of clever things, I'll, I'll share them with you guys. Okay, let me know what you guys think about this computer. Let me know what you guys think about kind of Apple's whole lineup, about those three that I mentioned, kind of the, the MacBook Air that's, that's fairly tricked out, the MacBook 14 inch that's quite tricked out, and then the MacBook Pro 16 inch that is the most tricked out there is, minus the hard drive. I didn't go all in on the hard drive. Uh, I think two terabytes is gonna be enough. And uh, 
yeah. Hey, do you guys wanna see a setup video? Do you wanna know, do you kinda wanna see like what I put on my computer, what I do to my computer? I did that when I bought the 2019 inch computer. Things have changed a little bit on my setup in the programs that I'm using, but uh, let me know if you guys wanna see a setup video of this computer. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Does anyone share their data with Apple? Like, you know, it says like, share your data with Apple and it'll help us make better computers. And I never do. <laughs>